this evening, would you take your Bibles and turn to 1 John chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3. I'm just going to read one verse of Scripture. And my thought tonight is proof that we've passed. Proof that we've passed. And notice, if you will, verse 5 of chapter 3 of First John. He says, And ye know that he was manifested to take away our sins, and in him is no sin. Verse number 5. Look at verse number 14 for my text. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. Now, if you will read this epistle of John, read it through, and with a pencil, draw a line under the word no. Wherever it occurs, you will be astonished to see how continually John nails down the fact that a Christian can know the believer has a positive knowledge. You don't have to guess. You don't have to think. You can know that you have passed. Now, there are those who would question our knowledge. I've had people, why you can't know you're going to heaven if I didn't know it, I would sure be a nervous wreck. Doctors tell you what they told me, you'd be a nervous wreck too. But I know, and thank God, you can know, though there are those who question it. They call themselves agnostics, and they are proud to be identified as an agnostic, the word agnostic comes from the Greek, I'm told, and has the same meaning as the word ignoramus, which comes from the Latin and is equivalent to the English word for knowing nothing. So they can be all the agnostics they want to be. I know in whom I believe. I'm glad that by faith a believer can know some things uh, that deal with eternity. Uh, there are some things about God and about the future and about prayer and about the work of the Spirit of God in a person's soul. Like the Apostle John, we can know them. We are sure of them. And we have felt them as surely as we know the fact of our existence. John said, we know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brethren. Now, there are four things given in this verse about which believers in Christ are and ought to be positive about. I pray these will somehow touch your heart and if there's one unsaved person here that it will help you to realize that you can be saved 
and know about it. You won't have to guess. You'll know it as much as you know you're breathing. How many here breathing tonight? Raise your hand. Now the rest of you's got problems. <laughs> you can know as much as you know that you are breathing, that you're in the family of God. And first of all, if you're taking notes, I hope you write this down. We know the past death. He said, we know that we passed from death. Now we know that once we were dead in trespasses and sins. We could not have passed from death if we were not in death, neither would there have been a change in bringing us into life if we were in life before. You see, a person realizes that they're dead spiritually. We know we've passed from death. This, is, this just verifies the doctrine of the natural ruined man, his original sin, his depravity of heart. You see, we who have been converted and become the subject of the work of the Spirit of God, know that we were once in spiritual death. We were utterly insensible. We heard the word of God, but we were never touched by it or led to believe in Christ. You see, we had no appetite of living men and living women. We at one time were beginning to become corrupt. The longer a sinner remains in sin and in death, the more corrupt he will become. I know I was dead for I was corrupt. Death had set its seal upon me and had put its stamp upon me uh, that could not be mistaken. I mean, I was dead before God. I was a church member. I had been baptized and that gave me a good feeling. And I thought everything was all right until I got to hanging around some people who had experienced the fact that they had passed from death. I mean, they had an appetite that I didn't have. They had a joy that I didn't have. They had a hunger that I didn't have. You see, I know the past death. And then secondly, write this down. We know the passing change. We know that we have passed from death unto life. Now the passage from death unto life is the reverse of the natural one. I mean, we all expect to pass from life unto death if the Lord doesn't come. How many's great grandfather is still alive? Will you raise your hand? One great 
grandfather is still alive. The rest of your great grandfathers have passed. Isn't that right? And uh, a lot of your mothers and fathers have passed. And it's just a matter of time until you will pass. You see, we all expect to pass from life unto death. But only the marvelous grace of God can pass us from death unto life. There has been such a change in us that is altogether supernatural. I mean such a change. My. You, I don't see how anyone can forget it, but I know the Bible says that a person may get so far away from God that he would forget it. But I tell you tonight, it's a supernatural change. Never would have occurred had we been left to ourselves. We just couldn't. Um, we, we absolutely could not make that change ourselves. We know now and are sure that it is so. <laughs> it is not easy to describe the passage from life to death, even though I have seen a few people uh, in my ministry that have passed from life to death. I could tell you a few experiences of them that have died. I remember being at the hospital when this man was about to die. And I'd been there for some time and I just sat down at the foot of the bed. And he opened his eyes and he said, Oh, preacher, don't, don't, don't sit there. There's the Lord. I'll never forget that. Made cold chills run over me. And uh, just a few minutes later, he took his last breath. But it is almost impossible for me to describe the passing from death unto life. What a wonderful process it is. I mean, it's, uh, it is not dying. It is the reverse. It is being quickened by the Holy Spirit of God. When man has believed in Jesus and rested in him, then he passes from darkness to light in the sense of passing from sorrow into overflowing joy. What a difference it makes. I've preached from this pulpit time and again and I've seen people come uh, into the church and their countenance would be that of almost uh, like they had lost their best friend or someone in the family had died. And then I've seen some that was just uh, uh, irritable. But then uh, the invitation was given and I, I've seen them walk the aisle and trust in the Lord Jesus. And what a uh, overflowing joy filled their heart. They'd be crying and laughing at the same time. What a joy, what a difference it makes. We know the passing change. We know the past death. Write this down. We know the present life. John says, we know we pass from death unto life. We know the present life. We know that we live. We have passed from a state of death 
And for the first time in our lives, we live. Someone explained it like this. Suppose you had been a pig all your life and that you were suddenly made into a man. Now you look through a telescope. Pigs cannot look through a telescope. Uh, you look through a microscope. I never seen a pig uh, do that in all my life. Uh, swine do not talk, but you speak, uh, you sing, you pray. Uh, you are a different creature from what you were. And I agree with the definition. You may be a pig, but when God changes, he can change a pig into a lamb. He can change a pig into a man. I'm saying it is just so with a believer. We have another life that we never possessed before. We live in a different world to that what we used to live in. We know things uh, that were unknowable to us at one time. We enjoy what we had never enjoyed before. I remember my dad saying, you get out of that bed, we're going to church as a little boy. I, you know, I didn't care much about that. But boy, when I got saved, I wanted to go to church. It was a desire in my heart. I enjoyed going to church. You see, it, it, there was a new position when a person gets saved, they're in a new position. You're no longer identified as a, a pig. You're identified as a lamb. Makes all the difference in the world. You uh, uh, have not only a new position, you're an ambassador. You're a representative of the Lord and uh, as a representative in your position, you ought to do all you can for him. And then there is a new pleasure. Uh, what a pleasure it is to be able to be identified with the people of God. When the preacher says, how many are saved? Raise your hand. Boy, I, I don't hesitate. I can be identified with the people of God a new position, a new pleasure because uh, you're a new people. And thank God uh, that you're made new. Paul said all things have become new. Uh, you must go to, uh, let me say, you must get a new life. Pass from death unto life or you cannot know these things. But we who believe in Jesus know that we have this life. I make no apologies. I know in whom I believe. The apostle Paul, I believe, got saved on the road to Damascus. I believe I'll see him in heaven. But he's no more saved than I am. If you don't know that you're saved, any more than the Apostle John or the Apostle Paul or any of the followers of the Lord, I would be identified today. Today is the day of salvation. One other fault, I want you to write this down. We know the proven mark. 
Not only do we know the past death and we know the passing change, we know the present life. Why enjoy this life? I rejoice to be in the family of God. But we know the proven mark. I've experienced it. I know what I'm talking about. You say the proven mark? John said, we know that we pass from death unto life because we love the brethren. If we can say that we love God's people as God's people because they are God's people, that is a mark that we have passed from death unto life. You have that mark? You love God's people? You see, love is the mark in a person's life that proves they have been made a new creature. Now, before I got saved, though I was just a little boy, there was about three people that I really liked at the uh, church there at Friendship. I love Mr. Akers because he would always pat me on the head and he'd go through the revelation and he'd call my name out and say, now what does that red horse represent, Cecil? And I'd try to tell him. And what does that white horse represent? And I'd tell him. And I was just a little boy and I liked Mr. Akers. I'd go clean out his chicken house and he'd give me 50 cents. And boy, I was tickled to death to have 50 cents. I'd come home and tell my daddy I made 50 cents. And he'd say, now how much of that belongs to God? And mama would say, you going to make that little thing give a, a nickel of that 50 cents. And he says, that belongs to God. You know, I, I've been brought up that way, but you know, uh, when I got saved, I loved everybody at the house of God. I mean, it, I don't make myself. It just overflows. It just comes. I love Mr. and Miss Edmondson. What a blessing. Great big people. They, uh, I joined the RAs, and boy, they know how to serve good refreshments at the RAs. But, oh, when I think about when I got saved, uh, I had a love. God put it in my heart uh, to love God's people because they are God's people. Love is the great mark in a person's life that proves they have been made a new creature. Loving Jesus supremely. Don't let anything come between you and the Lord. If your heart is where it ought to be, then you love him supremely, loving Jesus supremely. How could a person not love him who suffered and died and paid our sin debt in full? I don't understand. But I certainly praise God uh, for loving him supremely. And then secondly, loving the church sincerely. Let it be known that this is where you come to church. This is where you put the Lord's tithe. This is where you send missionaries around the world. We've got about 150 missionaries that we send around the world. Half of the income that comes into this church goes out for missions. Think of that. I'm glad and I'm so blessed to be a part of a church. And I hope that you love this church sincerely. If you love it, you'll want to support it. You'll want to be here when the lights are turned on. You'll want to be at the house of God, if not providentially hindered. I'm talking about loving it sincerely. And then loving the word especially. <laughs> oh, thank God for this book. I love this book. 
And if you love it, you'll read it and you'll study it and you'll want to know more about it. And uh, uh, you'll find things that you don't understand and you'll start asking the Sunday school teacher or you'll start asking the preacher. You'll start asking questions. You want to know this book because uh, you love Jesus supremely. You love the church sincerely and you love the word especially. Underscore that word brethren. The brethren are those who have become a part of this great family that is marching to Zion. I'm glad to be identified with the people of God. If you know you're saved, say amen. What a joy it is. That's my message. Let's bow our heads, please, for just a moment of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, in just a few seconds, just a moment or two, we'll be given an invitation. And dear Lord, I don't know how many people are here that have known that at one time they were dead in trespasses and sin. I don't know how many are here that have experienced uh, the changing and the new life. But Lord, you do. And I pray if there's one here that has never realized they're a sinner, that tonight as a sinner they'll come trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. I pray, dear Lord, if there's one that needs to come to do any kind of business with thee, they'll come. If it's for church membership or dedication of life, whatever you speak to their hearts about, I pray they'll be obedient to the Spirit of God. Have your way now, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.